Well, I think uh, over the last few decades, we learned a lot about HPV infection and the diseases associated with it. For several decades we, uh, ago, we realized that HPV infection is a necessary condition for the development of cervical cancer. And I think that was a landmark in cervical cancer prevention because since that day, uh, there's been a lot of effort to understand how the infection functions, how it causes cancer in the cervix, and find ways to prevent it, like prophylactic and in the future, hopefully, therapeutic HPV vaccinations. We now know that HPV is associated with practically almost 100% of cases of cervical cancer. But we have also understood that in other malignancies, which we didn't know in the past, such as anal cancer in 80% of the cases, vulva and vaginal cancer in 40% of the cases, or pharyngeal cancer, HPV is the cause of these malignancies. If we look at the global picture, I think we have probably over half a million cases diagnosed from HPV-related malignancies a year. And I think the biggest burden in the developing countries is still cervical cancer because cervical screening programs need substantial infrastructure and that infrastructure is not readily available um, in, in, in those countries. Uh, but it continues to be a problem even in the developed countries. So I think the future is going to be even better in, in preventing these malignancies. For example, in Europe, we still have about 33,000 cervical cancer cases a year, uh, mainly in countries of Eastern Europe where screening is practically just opportunistic and individual driven rather than organized screening programs. So the coverage of the population is actually quite low. And I think we have huge potential to do even better in the future. And I think our biggest uh, uh, advancement in the last decade has been prophylactic HPV vaccines. Well, I think there is no doubt that the impact has been great. Uh, we have had in the last year major publications in the Lancet and Cochrane Library suggesting high efficacy for the HPV vaccine in preventing pre-invasive disease of the cervix, vagina, vulva and anal um, uh, organs. I think we uh, have seen in countries that have applied vaccination programs the results coming through. We've had excellent data from Australia where vaccination was implemented in both girls and boys in 2007. We've seen major reduction in high-grade pre-invasive disease of the cervix. We've seen reduction in, in HPV infection rates, and we've seen reduction in the incidence of anogenital warts. And I think uh, in the next few years, we will see also that reflecting on the cancer uh, rates and the cancer incidence reduction. Obviously, it's an endpoint that requires a few years before we can see it but there is currently no doubt about high efficacy and extremely high safety of these vaccines. Um, current advice is that every girl and boy should be vaccinated in pre-pubertal age or before this, their sexual debut. And it will take years to have high coverage in those countries. It will take years to see the impact of the vaccination and I think now that we have very clear evidence on the, on the vaccine efficacy and safety, all future efforts should be on how we can accelerate the impact in vaccinating more and more people, particularly in the developing countries that screening is in existence and those countries will benefit the most.